In January 2020, DC officially closed Vertigo Comics. That news is a real shame for comic fans everywhere, since Vertigo's been the birthplace of experimental new series including the original Hellblazer, Fables, and my personal favorite, Scott Snyder's American Vampire. Since its beginnings in 2010, the series has ambitiously woven these monstrous creatures into the fabric of the nation's history. Beyond the premise, Snyder and lead artist Raphael Albuquerque use a masterful blend of gothic storytelling and moody visuals to establish a massive ensemble of well-rounded characters across a handful of time periods, ranging from the discovery of the New World to the dawn of the Space Age. Long story short, this book does a lot with a pretty short run. It's practically dripping with gothic atmosphere and bloody action. So if you're a fan of horror, then stop watching this video and read it right now. Please don't do that though, I worked really hard on this. So, sit back, grab some candy, because I'm about to explain what makes American Vampire a series you can sink your teeth into. While American Vampire leans a lot on spectacle, getting crazier with every issue, the series' heart lies in its vast cast of characters. While a Game of Thrones scale ensemble might be hard to follow, even harder hopping through time, Snyder manages to distinguish each character with emotional arcs that tie into the larger story of American history. At the cornerstone of this is our protagonist, Pearl Preston, who gives us our definitive hero's journey. Starting the book as a struggling actress in Hollywood, Pearl gets her first glimpse of the supernatural when her producer offers her up to a horde of his bloodthirsty friends. Eesh, that's pretty topical for... wait, 2010? This was written 10 years ago? God, I'm old. Anyway, through an encounter with another vampire, Skinner Sweet, Pearl is given a second chance that she immediately uses to get revenge on her attackers. While Pearl's story could have ended with these first issues, Snyder returns to her life over the course of the book, using time jumps to show Pearl's growing isolation living among humans. Snyder focuses this conflict through Pearl's relationship with Henry Preston, her human husband. While Pearl's powers keep her eternally young, Henry's age becomes more and more noticeable over the book's run, causing him to act out more to prove his worth. Not surprisingly, Pearl's enemies see Henry as her Achilles heel, and his refusal to turn puts a serious strain on their relationship. With Henry's death at the end of Volume 1, Pearl is thrown into an identity crisis, forced to either find a way to keep her sense of self, or surrender to her monstrous impulses and live like Skinner. Towing the line between tragedy and hope, Pearl's series-long arc is what grounds American Vampire, building the themes and struggles that run through every story in the book. Of course, a hero is only as good as their villain, and who's a better contrast than the notorious Skinner Sweet, outlaw killer, and other unsavory stuff. As a former soldier and known criminal, Skinner was killing and robbing his way across the country well before he was turned. While Pearl is able to hold back her darker side, Skinner's powers intensify his cruelty and give him a sense of superiority above humans and other vampires. But underneath his anger, Skinner is plagued by loneliness, made worse by the fact that he's outlived entire generations of friends and enemies. Much like Pearl, Skinner spends most of the series wrestling between his monstrous and human sides. This arc seemingly ends during Second Cycle's finale, with Skinner rejecting his instincts to help his friends, and losing his immortality in the process. The message behind Skinner's transformation is clear. Whether it's good or evil, monster or human, we are what we choose to be. While the throughline for American Vampire rests on Pearl and Skinner, Snyder builds an ensemble around them to flesh out the history of his world. As far back as the pre-colonial period, we witness the origins of vampirism in America through the Native American Mimite. Alongside Old West lawman Jim Book, we're shown the growth of the vampire's power in the West, and the threats posed by someone like Skinner. Not every vampire is a mustache-twirling villain, though. Detective Cash McCogan is given perspective through his vampire father and half-vampire son, 
abandoning his black and white morality as he learns about the monster's influence in the West. This perspective is explored even further through Calvin Poole, a soldier who's turned after coming across some of Pearl's vampire blood. While most vampires are depicted as unseen monsters who can stalk their prey undetected, Calvin's race and status as an American vampire make him a target in both worlds. As the book shifts perspective to its vampire characters, our relationship to its human characters begins to shift. The secretive society of vampire hunters, known as the Vassals of the Morning Star, are with us from the beginning, acting as a kind of monster-hunting version of Marvel's S.H.I.E.L.D. At first, the vassals seem like an appropriate check against threats like Skinner. They're far from perfect, though, and we see this through every underhanded move and threat the agency makes throughout the book. While any of these characters could carry their own story, Snyder weaves them together into a rich, well-crafted tapestry depicting a detailed gothic world. Speaking of, let's talk about the setting. America, even in the real world, is a storied place, chock full of memorable myths, places, and images. These aesthetics have grown so well known throughout our collective culture that we've given them a name. For many, these images represent familiarity, even comfort to us. And, true to his strengths as a horror writer, Snyder turns every one of these images on their head all while giving a metacriticism on America's historical revisionism. Subverting the happier myths of settlers cooperating with natives, Snyder depicts European colonists as the first vampires in America, connecting the vampire's bloodlust to real-world violence against Native Americans. This is explored further through Skinner's origin story, using his violence to show the human cost of the Manifest Destiny myth. Further down the timeline, Snyder subverts another piece of Americana, re-envisioning the sunny paradise of Los Angeles as a darkened hive, ruled over by the vampiric rich. This dark underbelly Snyder creates is enhanced through Raphael Albuquerque's pencils and Dave McCaig's colors, using deep shadows and sketchy, angular line work to build a sense of unease in the reader. This isn't the America of Johnny Appleseed or Paul Bunyan, it's a sinister playground for ancient creatures to feed on an unsuspecting populace. Through this gothic setting and characters, Snyder and company impart their philosophy. Evil lurks everywhere, even places we think are familiar or comforting. Snyder uses this dynamic to explore the real-world atrocities present in America's history, elevating the violence of colonization and the Indian Wars to a literally monstrous level. By depicting European settlers as the origin of vampirism in America, Snyder is able to comment on the evil inherent in America's beginnings, as well as foreshadow the vampire's assimilation into American culture. As the vampires gain a foothold in the New World, they urbanize and develop their colonies into cities to find bigger sources of food. They also push west, making another connection to America's violent past. Skinner only makes matters worse channeling his violence towards the native tribes. This connection between vampirism and racial violence gets further explored through Calvin Poole's story later in the book. As a black man traveling through segregationist America, Calvin gets a moment of peace when he comes across a band of fellow veterans who seem sympathetic. However, their monstrous prejudice surfaces when they discover Calvin's vampirism, branding him a lesser breed to be snuffed out. That doesn't go well for them. We also get more subtle allegories throughout the book. Through Pearl's attack at the beginning, Snyder draws a comparison to real predators in the entertainment industry, a full seven years before the breaking of the Harvey Weinstein scandal. While American Vampire spends most of its run commenting on the nation's violent history, its sequel book sets to confront that violence and the book's larger themes of good versus evil. This shift comes through a new antagonist, the Grey Traitor. Introduced as an existential threat to both humans and vampires, the Traitor is described by Snyder as a force that's been acting beneath the surface of the series, literally and figuratively, for a long time. As a figure with the power to influence others, the Traitor indoctrinates them by preying on fears and desires, having them reject their humanity to take on more monstrous forms. The traitor tempts a number of characters throughout the book, 
but his interactions with Pearl and Skinner are especially notable. While Skinner bends to the traitor's will, he eventually manages to regain control and reclaim his humanity, all at the cost of his powers. Pearl also manages to fight off the traitor's control, using her connection to Henry and her friends to ground her. This last battle between the protagonists and the traitor crystallizes American Vampire's message. Evil can lurk in any place or any one, but we alone make the choice to fight it or to give in. The entire run built to this final struggle, which made the series' sudden hiatus all the more crushing as it crept on into five long years. Vertigo's closing only worsened the series' chances for a revival, but according to an interview given by Snyder, American Vampire will climb back out of its grave in 2020, relaunching under DC's Black Label imprint. It's hard not to see this relaunch as a good thing. Scott Snyder's had a good five years to hone his craft, and if Undiscovered Country is any indication, he's more than ready to return to the horror genre with gusto. Albuquerque is also back as lead illustrator, and is sure to bring the mind-rending visuals to match Snyder's suitably gothic writing. So, if you're a fan of Scott Snyder's work, or gothic horror in general, American Vampire's the perfect story to sink your teeth into in 2020.